So Allah Almighty has given us beautiful instructions in this revelation. There is a verse that's repeated a lot that we should be speaking about often. And when we reconnect with this particular verse, we will realize it encompasses almost the whole of our lives. What is this verse? It is verse number 90 of Surah An-Nahl, where Allah speaks about himself. And as a result, he wants us to learn these qualities. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli. It is an instruction. So he's talking about himself. What does he instruct? Allah instructs the following. So Allah speaking about what his instruction is. Now here are qualities he wants us to learn from. He wants us to obey because he is saying, this is my instruction. The first thing he says, Al-Adl. Allah instructs justice. Allah instructs that you are just. Justice at the beginning with your maker would ensure that you worship him alone. No one besides he who made you deserves to be worshipped. That is the highest form of justice is to offer worship where it is belonged only, nowhere else. But by extension, justice refers to everything else to do with what is right and wrong, what is fair and balanced, a judging between people in a matter. You need to be fair, you need to fear the Almighty and you need to be unbiased. So Allah instructs you to be just. In Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan. He instructs you to be kind, to be good, to be kind. So that's the second in the order. You are just and then you are taught to be kind. Wa ita'i dil qurba. And he wants you to give to your relatives who are in need. Ita'i dil qurba doesn't mention the need. It just mentions giving the relatives. But what's understood is... Yes, exchanging gifts may be one thing, but more importantly, when people related to you are in need and you have a little bit excess from what you need, Allah expects you to reach out to them and give. Don't be miserly. Why? Because Allah gave you what you have in the first place. He wants to see, do you give others in need? And Allah Almighty thereafter says, وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغِي Allah Almighty prohibits. He has warned us through a prohibition of three things. That doesn't mean that there are only three things in the list of prohibitions by Allah. But in this particular verse, there are three things being mentioned. Allah prohibits immorality. Anything immoral, we shouldn't be looking at others with an eye of belittlement thinking that these people will never come to the right path. Perhaps their struggles, who knows? Allah knows them. And this is why Allah says, Yanha anil fahsha. Allah prohibits immorality of all sorts. That would include adultery, it would include pornography, it would include nudity, it would include so many other things based on the Islamic understanding. So, if a person is on a very high level of morality, he will definitely or she will definitely achieve a sense of comfort, a sense of fulfillment, a nur or a light that comes from their face because Allah promises you that. And they would achieve the happiness, the contentment that comes with it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every goodness so Allah says, Yanha anil fahsha wal munkar. Allah prohibits you from evil. Munkar, that which is evil, sinful. And al baghi refers to crossing the limits, crossing the boundaries. Allah doesn't want you to cross the limits. He has set a boundary. Don't cross that. You know, it's called transgression. Do not transgress. Don't go beyond what Allah has ordained. So if you are going to protect yourself from immorality, evil, and transgression, you have succeeded. That's Allah. Allah has promised you and guaranteed you that you save yourself from immorality, evil, and transgression. MashaAllah. So reconnecting with revelation would ensure that you engage in good things and stay away from bad things. 
and you recognize what's good and bad. Someone might say, for example, what's a big deal about how I dress? Well, if you're a believer, there is a big deal. If you believe and you actually take the word of Allah as important, then surely it's a big deal. If Allah told you don't do this, how could you claim to be a believer and ignore that? That's why Allah says, مَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَ إِذَا قَضَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَارَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah says, a believer, a person who believes, male or female, it is not befitting for them to call themselves believers and then claim that I have a choice regarding what the Almighty wants and doesn't want and has instructed and hasn't instructed and the messenger has instructed and not instructed. What was the claim of belief for in the first place? And remember, we believe that revelation was sent in order for us to be able to lead the best life in terms of quality with the challenges and the hardships and the tests that are going to come in our direction, the Almighty will continue to keep us afloat and keep us happy and content and smiling all the time. And this is why the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, no matter what difficulty and hardship he went through, he always thanked Allah. It could have been worse. He was always grateful to the Almighty and he never complained to the Almighty about the hardship that he was in. So we ask Allah Almighty to grant us from his goodness and Allah Almighty definitely says that those who believe male and female and those who do good deeds male and female, Allah will grant them a good life. فَلَنُحِيَّنَّهُ حَيَاتٌ طَيِّبًا A good life. And in the hereafter, paradise awaits them. May Allah grant us goodness in this world and the next. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد.